Welcome to another amazing video from Team Supreme Gamers. In our last Hardware Buy Guide video, we discussed some of the best storage and RAM upgrades you can do right now for Android x86. We also discussed some of the things that you should consider before getting the best RAM or SSD for your budget. In this video, we're going to recommend some of the best laptops that you can buy for your low, medium, and high-end budget and how they'll perform on Android x86. While the global pandemic and chip shortage is making every laptop out there expensive and out of stock, we'll tell you the things you should avoid before purchasing your new laptop. Android x86 is very different from any usual Windows or Linux operating system. Things like dedicated mobile GPU don't work on Android x86, so you don't need to spend the extra money on buying an expensive gaming laptop even an Intel Core i3 10th gen CPU laptop can run any modern game like PUBG Mobile at the highest settings. Android x86 is a very lightweight OS that can run on both old and new hardware from the Intel Atom and the Intel Pentium to the latest Core i7 or i9 and even AMD Ryzen APUs. The CPU support on Android x86 is not as good as other Linux distributions, but with the help of Gearlock Recovery, you can easily switch your kernel and Mesa to the latest supported version. It can take developers 6 to 12 months to release a stable version for your new CPU or GPU, so getting the latest and greatest hardware for Android x86 is not ideal as well. The best laptop for Android x86 is the one that has touchscreen support like the new HP Envy X360, which is a 2-in-1 convertible laptop. A convertible laptop is a lightweight but powerful machine that is built for graphics and designing work, which means you'll get a good quality display with multi-touch support to play games on Android x86. We don't recommend buying Microsoft Surface devices because they have poor support on Android x86 and they'll need some special kernel porting to work on Phoenix OS. If you ask me which one is better, a high refresh rate, 120Hz screen, or a 60Hz touchscreen, then I'll always choose a touchscreen because it will make your life easier. Nowadays, most of the operating systems like Windows 10 has native support for touchscreen devices, so you don't need to carry a mouse in your laptop bag. Another thing you should consider before getting a new laptop is the SSD. Buying a laptop with a spinning hard disk in 2021 doesn't make any sense, and we've already discussed the benefits of using an SSD in our previous video. Windows 10 is known for slowing down your laptop speed during system update, so having a faster SSD can eliminate those problems. If you want to buy a Windows plus Android x86 gaming laptop, then you need to consider a few more important factors like dedicated GPU, build quality, thermal system, and display panel. All of these things depend on the manufacturer and device model. If you want in-depth reviews of laptops, then I recommend you to visit the notebookcheck.net website. They do very detailed reviews of laptops and other mobile devices. You can also compare your laptop with other similar priced laptops and see what they did better than other manufacturers. Now, moving on to the best low budget laptops for Android x86. In this price category, you might not be able to play modern Windows games due to a poor GPU, but you can easily play any modern Android game using Phoenix OS or any other Android x86. The pricing and availabilities of laptops depends on your country and seller, so you can check these models or any similar spec model on your online retailers. So the first device on the list is the IdeaPad D330 with a 10 inch IPS touch display and Intel Celeron N4000 processor. This CPU cannot handle Windows 10, but it can run any Android x86 OS without any issues. The design and build quality of the laptop is excellent for the price, and if you want to buy a cheap device for your kids to do online classes and some lightweight Android gaming, then this is an excellent budget-friendly device. 
if you think you can't do anything productive on this poor CPU, then let me tell you that Axon uses a Celeron CPU to build Gearlock Recovery and Dark Matter as well. So for those people who just want to get shit done, this laptop is just a tool. My second recommendation for low to mid budget people is the HP Pavilion X360 and the Dell Inspiron 5406. Both of these are 14 inch 2-in-1 laptops with 11th gen Intel Core i3 CPUs and the older 2020 model comes with the 10th gen i3 at a slightly lower price. Both of these laptops are powerful enough to play modern Android games like PUBG Mobile with max settings and they are also lightweight which makes them easy to carry and travel. Basically, it's the best choice for any school or college student. For medium budget people, I recommend the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 and the Asus VivoBook Flip 14 with 4th and 5th gen Ryzen 5 APUs. The 5th gen Ryzen APU comes with 6 cores and 12 threads, which is great for Android development and compiling programs and source code. The Ryzen APU also comes with a new high-performance AMD Radeon graphics core, which is great for some light Windows games. Moving on to the high-budget laptops. These 2-in-1 laptops are more expensive than normal non-touch ones because they have a solid build quality and come with some extra features like a fingerprint reader, stylus pen, and LTE connectivity on a few selected models. The first device is the Lenovo Yoga C640. It comes with a 10th gen Intel CPU and LTE connectivity on a few selected models, but I'm sure they'll release an 11th gen model soon. And the second one is the Lenovo Yoga 6 with the 4th gen AMD Ryzen APU. Both of these devices have a solid build quality, but if you want the best overall laptop, then the Asus ZenBook Flip 13 OLED is the king. It comes with a 4K OLED touchscreen and the new 11th gen Intel Iris X graphics, which is great for all creative works like photo and video editing. Although the support for Intel XE graphics might not be stable for Android x86 yet, Intel developers are pretty good at adding support for their CPUs in the latest kernel and Mesa development. If you want to buy a gaming laptop instead of a 2-in-1 laptop that can handle both Windows and Android x86 games, then I recommend the Lenovo Legion 5 with an AMD Ryzen 5 4600H and an NVIDIA GTX 1650 discrete GPU. This device is also recommended by many YouTubers and laptop reviewers as the best budget-friendly gaming laptop, but pricing and availability of laptops might depend on your country and retailers. A few other recommended models are the HP Omen Gaming Laptop with Ryzen 5 4600H and NVIDIA 1660 Ti GPU, the MSI Bravo 15 with Ryzen 7 4800H and AMD RX 5500M GPU, the Asus Tough Gaming A15 with new AMD Ryzen 7 5800H and NVIDIA RTX 3060 Laptop GPU. This laptop is not released in a few countries, but you can also buy the older Asus ROG Cephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 7 4800HS, GTX 1650 Ti 4GB GDDR6 graphics. The build quality and performance on the Zephyrus device is great, and that is why this laptop is recommended by many laptop reviewers as one of the best 2020 gaming laptops. A few honorable mentions are the Acer Swift 5 14 inch with Intel i5 11th gen CPU and full HD IPS touchscreen display, the Lenovo IdeaPad S145 with 3rd gen AMD Ryzen 5, Lenovo ThinkPad E15 Gen 2 with the AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 4650U. The ThinkPad series is a business laptop but if you have ever used one, or have any friends using one, then they'll tell you the build quality and performance on a ThinkPad is great, and even after 4-5 to five years of usage, they don't break or hang like other laptops. That's all for the Android x86 hardware guide today. 
I wanted to make a GPU buy guide as well. It's really hard to find one these days, so the best option is to either buy a laptop with a good discrete GPU, or if you want a desktop, then buy gaming desktops from HP, Dell, and Lenovo that have a new GPU pre-installed in them. Maybe I'll make one in the future with a full PC build tutorial. Until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ghostface, and I'll see you in the next one.